I would say that yesterday's move was was mainly a function of of you know interest rates, and so we went from you know one percent on the ten year very quickly to one point six intraday last week on the ten year, and so pulling back to about one four, I think you know it, it's a small move, but it means a lot, and so yes, I think that you know that back up in rates to one six is you know overdone, uh, largely a function of you know, what happens every now and then, which is talk of inflation. And, uh, you know, we can talk more about it. I, I think that the idea that inflation really picks up in a meaningful and permanent way is, is there's certainly no evidence for that and, and don't see that happening. But I think that, yeah, yesterday's move was just kind of a, a pause in the worry about, you know, a backup in rates. Yeah, and I wonder if investors should not read into yesterday's move too much because, by the way, the first day of March last year, stocks also ended the day higher by around 2 to 3 percent. And then we know what followed a bruising month for the month of March in 2020. Uh, right. Do you think history could repeat itself? A bruising month? Well, no, I don't. I mean, it's certainly it's hard sometimes to separate what you hope will happen and what you think will happen. I hope not, and I don't believe that will be the case. I mean, obviously, last March was... You know, this would be the polar opposite of last March. You know, we are now kind of going in the right direction with a third vaccine. And I think the sense is that this is all happening a little more quickly than people would have thought just two or three months ago. So I, I think that, you know, there's certainly no exogenous event like a, a pandemic that is going to get in the way of what's been a, a good start to the month. So then you say with the Dow trading above 31,000 and the S&P 5 and the Nasdaq above 13,000 that this market still has more room to run. Working off this trifecta of that stimulus bill getting passed and moving forward to the Senate and uh, B of A now putting out that new growth estimate for 7.5 percent U.S. GDP for, for this year. Is that what you're working? That's your bullish thesis here? Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, it's interesting with growth because I think that that's being underestimated. It's hard. It's always hard to model in what growth will be. And I think even you know, right now there's so much pent up demand. Uh, so, yeah, I think that growth and, you know, the expansion of margins, uh, you know, and, and where we are with, you know, with rates in multiples. So rates at one four on the 10 year still historically low. It's about where we were when the pandemic started or right before, uh, you know, to put that in context. You know, we have about a four and a half percent earnings yield on the S&P. And so when you look at that versus the 10 year, that relationship is pretty much just as good as it was before we started talking about the pandemic. Uh, and, and then a lot of cash on the sidelines. Uh, I would note, you know, S&P 500, about seven trillion dollars yeah. on the balance sheet and, and private equity at about one and a half trillion. And that's about that's an unlevered number. So I think there is a lot of, you know, wind in our backs. And yeah, the growth, I think that. And Josh, when I hear about growth, yeah, go ahead. On Sorry. growth, what's a, your best uh, stock pick right now? Best stock pick. So, you know, looking at our Hennessy Mid Cap 30 fund, you know, looking at, you know, we in that fund look at valuation and earnings growth and stock price momentum. I would point out Quanta Power Services uh, growth and kind of the high single digits, uh, trading at about 19 times earnings and certainly some significant stock price momentum recently. Uh, Quanta sits. Uh, at the nexus of some interesting uh, trends, very timely. Uh, it is a an infrastructure and uh, services company, mainly for utilities. So as we saw in Texas recently, about two weeks ago, uh, certainly highlighted the need for uh, grid hardening, you know, to deal with weather, adverse weather, as well as modernization. And, yeah. you know, as we hear, you know, more and more the integration of renewables. So I think that a company like Quanta uh, is interesting and Speaking of stimulus and infrastructure spending, I mean, that is obviously, again, very timely. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.